Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gent Sense. I don't know why I'm motioning you like this. It's off-putting. Today we're taking a look at seven different fragrances that will leave an amazing scent trail wherever you go. Yeah, these are those types of scents that leave a, a scent cloud in your wake, a scent trail in your wake that will turn people into uh, Pepe Le Pew, you know, floating, smelling, whatever you're wearing. I just dated myself talking about Pepe Le Pew. Ugh. Let's keep it moving. So he has seven different fragrances here. All of these smell fantastic in the air and I've got a great uh, kind of mixture, smorgasbord of fragrances. We've got some here that are a little bit classier, going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older. We've also got some fragrances here for the younger guys out there, the young books. So pretty much everything covered. We also have cheap and not quite as cheap scents here. So let's jump into it. Let's tackle these bad boys. Before we jump into the official fragrance list, codes, Gents10, Gents10, same code for MaxAroma.com and TwistedLily.com. That'll get you 10% off your order. Anything you want to buy on those websites, you want to save a little money, use that code Gents10. Or be a putz and, and pay full retail. I mean, whatever. I'm sure the stores would actually like it more if you didn't use the code, because <laughs> that 10% going to them. All right, where to jump in here? Where to jump in? You know, let's do one of those uh, gentlemanly fragrances first. Davidoff, Zeno. Yeah, this right here from Discounters, not gonna cost you much at all. Like, frankly, most Davidoff fragrances that aren't discontinued. I mean, it's a brand that typically you can pick up for like 20 bucks maybe 30 on the high end, at least with most of the releases. Now this has that classic gentlemanly feel to it. It smells similar to Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. Not quite as smooth as Beau de Jour. Maybe you would say not quite as modern as Beau de Jour, but it's right in that wheelhouse, right in that style, and way, way cheaper. And actually for the price point, this stuff does smell really high quality. So with this one, you've got woods, you have rosewood, sandalwood, you've got patchouli, lavender. It's clean, it's classy, it's aromatic. I think it still smells great, even if the fragrance is going on 37 years old. After that, let's talk about this one, Mercedes-Benz Club Black. Now this fragrance has been hyped up quite a bit and for good reason. It is available at discounters as of this video and actually for a decent price, if I recall correctly. I will double check really quick just to make sure so that I'm not lying to you. Yes. I am not lying to you. I had to double check just to make sure because uh, a lot of times, especially here over the past year or so when I found it at discounters, it's going for like $70, 75. And at that price point, I mean, it's still worth it. It's a really nice fragrance, high quality vanilla, amber, you know, touch of smoke, great great for fall and winter time. But right now it's at fragrance buy for $39. US and that is a great price point to be at. So as I said, that one hyped to death and for good reason. It's one of the best vanilla fragrances out there as far as vanilla forward, vanilla centric designer scents goes. Yes, I think that the packaging here, the bottle is a little bit cheesy. You know, it's a little bit cheap because it's very plasticky feeling well, because it is plastic. And then you have that little uh, glass bottle there in the middle. I, I think it doesn't look great, but the fragrance is top notch. Like really, really surprisingly good. Much better than you might think from something coming from Mercedes Benz. Of course, Mercedes Benz, a great car brand, car manufacturer, uh, but a lot of people out there, especially people that aren't into the fragrance world, might not think of Mercedes as being like a great fragrance house, but they've got some good ones. After that, Mont Blanc Explorer, good old Explorer. It's a kind of a designer take on Creed's Aventus. Very wearable, great versatility. You can wear it any time of year, daytime or nighttime. And this one also from Discounter is very affordable, which helps a lot. One of those deals where if you smell this fragrance and you paid $120 for it, maybe you wouldn't be so hyped. But if you paid $25 or $30 for it, then you go, ah, what a deal. So as I said, similar to Creed's Aventus, it's got that opening that's very fresh and fruity, bergamot being uh, the citrus that's in the forefront in Explorer. Uh, it doesn't have you know that smokiness that Creed Aventus has. It's not leaning that far in that direction. It's like a fresher take on it with a modern woodiness, but done very well. After that, Hero Eau de Parfum. 
from Burberry. Yeah, uh, the original Burberry Hero was not a, a smash hit, at least as far as how it was received by people in the fragrance community. If you want to call it that, a lot of people really crapped on it for being boring, essentially for not really doing anything new. Kind of is what it is. I think that Burberry Hero is a fine versatile fragrance like if you want something that you can spray on and go and uh, wear it just about anywhere and it's gonna work pretty well it does that are there other fragrances that also do that that I think are better yeah for sure but if you smell Burberry Hero the original eau de toilette and you like the way it smells then you can get a lot of use out of that and it's not the type of scent that's gonna be divisive you know you're not gonna find a lot of people who say it smells gross or it's off-putting or whatever so yeah it could work really well for a lot of people does it you know get me hyped up nah but I see the appeal potentially for some people out there. Now this one, Hero Eau de Parfum, I think is actually a lot better, more interesting. This one makes use of benzoin. So you get this, this sweetness, this little bit of warmth, a slight balsamic feel to it, incense in here as well, so a touch of smoke. And it does have that cedar that carries over from the previous Burberry Hero. And you would think because they list it as having like three different types of cedar that it's gonna be just a woody bomb, right? Just an overload of cedar. But it's really not that. It's amber woody. It is, as I said, sweet, warm. Has pretty good performance. It lasts a good amount of time. You can pick it up easily as you move around. And it smells great in the air. This is a potential compliment puller. I would say even more than the original Burberry Hero. And this one actually has some vague similarities to the Stronger With You line. It is not at all uh, a one-to-one -one or a dupe or a replacement for the Stronger With You line. But it is the type of scent where I would say for the majority of people out there that do like Stronger With You, you know, any of those, Stronger With You, Stronger With You Intensely, uh, that they would probably like this as well. So yeah, that one's gonna be one of those scents where a lot of people kind of write it off because it is a Burberry Hero release. But it actually smells really good in the air. That one is nice. Maybe not the most original thing ever, but if you wanna smell good, then, you know, go for it. Then we got Rare Carbon from Offnon. This is a clone fragrance, and it's a clone of Ombre Leather from Tom Ford. And this is a really good clone. This is one of those clone fragrances where it doesn't have that crappy opening, <laughs> that harsh opening where you spray it on and the first 30 minutes or so are just kind of a jumbled mess, you know, where they have a chemically feel to them, a synthetic, overly synthetic feel. That happens with clones from time to time. And this one does not have that, thankfully. Like ombre leather, it's a nice, smooth leather scent. Very easy to wear, very approachable. It's, as I've said before, uh, the leather fragrance made for people who don't usually wear leather fragrances. I like leather fragrances in all their shapes and forms and sizes and all that stuff. Harsh ones, animalic ones. Maybe it'll take me a little more time to come around to those, but typically I do and I really enjoy them. And then your more spicy, warm leather scents. I like that. I like. Like I said, pretty much all leather scents or types, or I should say I like leather scents from all types of leather scents. But a lot of people don't. That's one thing that I have come to realize over the years and talking to people, you know, getting emails, reading comments, and, and just meeting people. Since I started the channel, I mean, uh, leather scents are very divisive. And a lot of people do not go for leather scents, even ones that I myself find to be easier to wear. And that's where ombre leather comes in and rare carbon because it's smelling like ombre leather. People who will not wear leather fragrances will wear ombre leather because it's just, as I said, so smooth, easy going. It has just the right amount of sweetness to offset any of the leather that's in there that could ever potentially be 1% divisive. Smells great and that makes very good use of violet just like ombre leather. Up next, we got La Nuit de Lome Eau de Parfum not the eau de toilette. This one, thankfully, you can still find easily 
at discounters, pretty much all discounters. Some of the other ones, a little bit harder to find. Uh, another choice that I think is a very good one is La Nuit de Lome Le Parfum. But yeah, La Nuit de Lome Eau de Parfum, this fragrance did not get a massive amount of love or hype when it came out, but if you're looking for a fragrance that in the air smells great to 99% of people, again, potential compliment pulling type of scent, one that's really nice for the evening, good spring, fall, and winter time. Check this out. It does make use of cardamom, just like the original Lana Weed Alone does. Also has leather, has sandalwood, and tonka. And uh, the leather in here, don't worry, I know we just talked about leather a lot, but the leather in here, very easy going. This does not smell super close to Lana Weed Alone Eau de Toilette. It's more like bits and pieces of that mixed with bits and pieces of the one from Dolce & Gabbana, and then kind of turned into its own little twist. But yeah, just even mentioning Lana Nuit de Lomo de Toilette and the one Eau de Parfum, you know what's up with this, big time date night scent. Last, but definitely not least, Voyage d'Hermes. This is the Parfum, wonderful fragrance. This stuff smells fantastic. It is another one that probably is going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older. I uh, can't imagine too many young guys out there wearing this one, but you definitely could. Just going off the scent itself, this one, one of my favorites in this list, I would say uh, right up there at the top with the Mercedes Benz, just really good stuff. So you have cardamom once again here, you have lemon, you have spices, you have tea, uh, green notes, musk, some woods in here as well. It's fresh, it's aromatic, the cardamom is more of a green cardamom. It doesn't go, you know, super sweet and sticky like sometimes you can find in more date night oriented fragrances that do make use of that cardamom heavily. But it is also warm and, and spicy as well. So you have like this kind of mix of things going on, fresh, green, as I said, warm, spicy, wonderful fragrance, super classy, elegant, masculine, uh, works great nearly year round. And that one is a, a great kind of sleeper office fragrance. Not too many people are gonna be wearing that to the office. You know, it's not your gray vetiver or your Prada Lome. It's not talked about like those, but just as good. And I think actually would set you apart more than those will. So there we go, seven fragrances. Fantastic smelling, great scent trails with these. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.